Good morning, guys. I want to show you today how I convert an application into a serverless function. Okay, here's the background. So this is actually a follow-on video from the the whole HTML print to PDF thing that I was trying to work on that I was working on before. After a lot of testing, um, where I used Chrome Puppeteer to generate the PDF, as you can see, the Puppeteer version struggles with like doing the headers and footers properly, doing the page numbering, and the layout isn't very good either. Um, there's a there's a third party service here called Doc Raptor. You can see here that the PDF looks a lot better. The headers and, and footers kind of work, page numbering works, and um, and, and and such. So why is this prince backed doc raptor whatever much better um the way i understand it is is that it correctly interprets print css and this is what print css looks like you know i'm just telling it to put the page numbers in the bottom right and to put the link some html the top and bottom on each page so the the ideal way to run this is to run prints myself. Uh, this this output in in my in my uh, in my application. Uh, yeah, the, the, this is Prince twelve, so it, it does flexbox unlike Do Doc Rector quite well. So I want this as a service running in my own infrastructure. How do you do that? The cool thing, I think, is that this is a great uh, application of serverless. The the prints um, binary, is, is, I think, is pretty much statically built. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to upload the prints binary to uh, a Lambda environment on AWS, and I'm going to have like what do you call it, a shim around it, where where basically I take the HTML post. I run prints on it because Lambda is basically just an AMD64 environment. I run prints uh, on it just like I've done here. And then I upload it to S3 and I return that URL uh, back in the response. So, yeah, I'm not going to video the whole thing of me doing it. I think I'm just going to stop and start. So you can see me making the milestones and what I what I did to to get there. So let's let's begin, guys. Step one is to provision the lambda, which takes a few minutes, and I use a program called Up by TJ Holloway Chuck to do that. Um, Up just takes the complexity away. So all I've you need a configuration. And this one's a little bit complicated because of the multiple accounts that we have on AWS. But effectively what it's done is sent my pro set up this sort of domain um, with this with this binary by well with this program behind it. All I'm doing is printing out howdy. Keeping it simple. And it works. So I think after every sort of milestone I, I do, I'll just um, commit it to commit it to Git. And in parallel, while that was taking some minutes to to get ready, I quickly created um, a statically built um, "Hello World" for me to run in the Lambda, so that I know that works. And I also investigated um, how to run it. And you know, like sometimes I'm looking at the docs. Oh, this, is, oh, this looks like useful for running things. Um, I've never seen this before. <laughs> but then I go into my own uh, what do you call it? Uh, go source directory, and then I run grep, and I see I've written a program that does an exec um, using GoLang. So now I can just copy and paste the code. So I will do that. I'm just going to commit the code now, so you can follow along. We want that. Uh, oops, that's clean here. We want that. We want that. We want that. 
uh, set up my user to email, commit, looks good. I'll call this step one. Uh, so please follow along with the, with the GitHub link below. Okay, second milestone. I've got, hello, I've got my, um, my statically built binary running on Lambda. So it took me a few iterations. Um, but this is the code. I'll check it in shortly. I, I, I use Jin to, to do local development. I think the code could be better written. This this nesting here is a bit fugly. Um, but the important thing is that it works up on the AWS cloud. So let's check that in. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna check in the binary. Step two. Hi hey guys, next milestone, check this out. Prince is running in the AWS Cloud Lambda environment. Um, and it seems to work. I was somewhat worried it might not work because <laughs> when I extracted the, um, the package, it turns out that it's actually dynamically linked. So it has all these dependencies, but it would appear those same dependencies, I guess, are in the AWS environment. It seems to work. So yeah, um, and then there was all these other stuff here, you know, God knows what all this dick DTD and all this stuff, other. but anyway, I just, I copied it all over to, to here. I won't check in this file. This will go into git ignore. But that's basically the, the Prince distribution. And then, as you can see, I just modified it. I deployed it running make, use make files peeps, and it seems to work. So now I need to um, do the stuff where it handles the post and writes it to a file, and then the output goes to S3. See you later. Right, so I made some changes and the output is uploading to S3. Works locally, I, I test that by just running gin and then doing a curl here. Oops, doing a curl here, it gives a response and I can look at it here. Yes, it works. Now, but then if I, if I, if I deploy it, which I already have, um, it doesn't work here. Oh no, Whoa, what's going on? So at this point I would um, look at the, the production logs. Up has this like staging production thing. I'm just using the production target. And you can see here that Hello World is failing to write. Uh, Prince is failing. It's basically failing because it can't write out. Lambda is a read only system. So we need to use temp. So let me just check in what I have right now and I'll fix it in a Hi guys, again I've made some changes and I, I'm using slash temp to escape the read only issue and I uploaded it but it doesn't work. So what do the logs say? The logs say da, 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 that it failed to upload to S3. So yeah, this is a general uh, dance that you play with when you're using AWS stuff is that you come across something where you don't have permission to do something and then you have to add it. So I'll um, just, I'll commit and I'll show you how I add the S3 permission. Okay, I fixed the permission uh, problem. And first off, I just wanna say that I'm using V2 of the AWS SDK and Go. And V1 had this fantastic feature called credential change reverse. Basically with this option enabled, it allowed you to see exactly what permission you were missing um, because as you saw in that previous error log, it wasn't very clear. Now, to add a permission to your function, like for example, uh, up created this uh, role and you basically, on the ADFS console, this web 
thing is actually called the console. You can create a policy, and, and to be honest, the the um, and and you should create the policy for just what that thing needs to do. So this wizard is actually pretty awesome, and you can create your policy um, that way and attach it. But I prefer to, um, and I forgot about this, but I remembered. I prefer just to put the policy in the up.json because then, uh, you know, if I redeploy this or tear it down and redeploy this, I don't have to remember to add the policy in the console. It's all in one sort of configuration file, up.json. So here I'm being a bit lazy and because all I need to do is write, but but the, the actual, anyway, I just put star there, asterisk, this is a wild card and, and, and I'm careful not to specify every bucket in the planet, but just the bucket I need. Um, I might have to change that when I do de a proper deployment. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see it's working. Yes! Quick updates and some board. I have made some changes. Um, what changes have I made? I'm basically redoing the doing the input. So the input will be to the what gets posted will be a piece of JSON. And um, I put on this stuff here. The, this this stuff here, the context for the logging, make sure that I have nice logs <clears throat> and yeah I'm, I'm i'm checking that the json with the url payload pointing to the html file which i'll create which i'll turn to a pdf is actually a url and it's of the type url from from my own s3 bucket because i don't want you abusing my endpoint um and i just do a return in there just to check this part works which it does See, I've got a little, oh, sorry, I killed my server. Wish it works. Should write some tests, but uh, I think I'll do that a bit later. See ya. Hi guys, so as you can see here, I submitted my, my payload URL to my Lambda endpoint, and it comes back with a link to the PDF on S3, and it works. Sort of, the logo is missing, um, and I noticed in the logs, here I was following them, I noticed in the logs that there's some sort of CA file issue. But I'm gonna end the tutorial here, my walkthrough, and you can follow on the git commits uh, after this uh, in the git repo below. But I think it mostly kind of works, and. And yeah, um, I hope this helped you understand how to to use uh, Lambda. Um, you know, the, the generating PDFs here isn't like a time sensitive thing because there would have been, um, I imagine this, well, I imagine this to be a, a little bit on the slow side, especially when it's, when it's cold. So it takes more than a second. So it doesn't really matter in this use case. Um, but if you were somehow wanting to handle lots and lots of requests, you probably want to maybe maybe use something like ECS, you know, running a Docker container. But but no, this is where Lambda shines. It's because we just need this little service running with this little endpoint, uh, running a binary um, um, and our own infrastructure and uh, with our own little control. It's pretty simple to get everything going. It took me a couple of hours, and you should know how to, to do it too. So please, please like the video, please subscribe for more, please comment below, and um, thank you for watching. Bye guys.